Hello, so um, a bit more exams news here. Um, this is based on what's happening in England. Now, if you're in Scotland or Wales, then you don't have exams, they've been cancelled, you just have some class assessments instead. Again, the details about that I'm not quite sure about. But whatever's happening in England tends to be mirrored around the world, especially if you're doing IGCSEs or international A-levels. And from what I can see is that this document here um, is going to give you a bit more information about how it might affect your exams wherever you are in the world. But for all of you in England, um, the end of January is when there's going to be advanced information about your exams published by the exam board. That gives you plenty of time and your teachers plenty of time as well, and me plenty of time, to help prepare you for the exams which are coming up in summer 2021. So things will be published, they'll be given to you, and I'll let you know about this at the end of January. And basically these are the principles that Ofqual, uh, so Ofqual, the Office for Qualifications, they've produced this document. They've got some principles about, I guess, what's guiding them. And you can find all of this information on their website, including a Word document, which I've got here, there's a PowerPoint, and there's a video, which is not proving very popular. Lots of people are disliking the video, but I've got a link to it up here that you can watch after this. Basically, um, the government have said some changes are going to happen. Ofqual have to work out how that's going to happen. But basically, the two things are there's going to be advanced information about what's coming up in your exam, and also they're going to give you formula or equations that you might need to know. So um, they've got a few things here that they're going to put out for consultation. That means people like you as students, your parents and other teachers, you can have your view and kind of say what you want. So Ofqual, Ofqual can actually, I guess, hear what the general population is thinking about. So the advanced information, the stuff that's published, uh, should not be so detailed that students are just able to memorise answers. Um, and I think that's quite important because if they say you're going to be assessed on uh, wave power and tidal power, then that means you might just know everything about those two sorts of renewable energy and just ignore everything else. And I think what they're going to try and do is maybe give you the broad topic rather than the detailed specifics of what's actually coming up in that question. And the other thing they're going to do is that um, they're going to try and make sure that this advanced information, it's not so extensive or specific that it damages a student's progression to higher level qualifications in the subject. Effectively, if they said what's in your exam, then your teachers might not teach you the rest of the course. You might never look at it. You might not even revise your notes or re-look back at the classwork that you've done before. And that might really affect you if you, for example, did GCSE physics and you didn't learn half of the course because you knew it wasn't going to be in the exam. That meant that when it gets to A-level physics and it gets a little bit more complicated, you'll have massive gaps in your knowledge. I think they still want you to be knowing a, you know, the broad subject, but then they're just going to tell you a few hints to actually focus your revision before the exams. And also, they want to make sure that um, if they're telling people what's coming up on the exam, they want to make sure that not everybody's going to get 100%, because how can you then tell who's a grade 9 student at GCSE, who's an A-star student at A-level, and who's maybe a U or an E or a, a grade 2 at GCSE? So what they want to do is, even though they're publishing what's coming up in the exams, they want to make sure that there's still going to be a whole range of marks available so that you can really show how well you're actually doing in those exams. Now, something in here that it does say, and I think this is really promising, is that, that we believe that students taking exams in summer 2021 should be given formula and equations in the exams. So what I read into this is if you're doing GCSE, they will give you all of the possible equations which are mentioned in the specification. So you'll get a data sheet with all the equations on it, and that means you don't need to memorise them. Now that's good. Obviously, um, you know, if you don't understand what these equations mean, if you haven't practised, you're going to find it really hard in the exam. So memorising them is one thing, but it's actually applying them and actually recognising which equation to use at which time. That's the important skill. Okay, but it does sound like for GCSE and even for A-level, they're just going to give you all the equations that you could possibly need to know. And they've given this the kind of document, um, they've put it into the public domain now because they want to have your feedback, because they want to make sure the changes they make don't adversely affect one group in particular. So that means it's fair. And they've, they talk here about protected characteristics. Um, often that's people maybe with some kind of disability or based on ethnicity or race. They want to make sure that if they say these equations um, are given to you in the exam, these topics are coming up, 
is that fair for everybody who's going to be sitting the exam? And again, on the actual consultation document, uh, you can put in your feedback there about, is it fair? And if it's not fair, why not? And um, I suppose, yeah, I think um, this is something here which is quite important. Uh, there's a risk that students who are able to revise all the content for a subject will be better prepared to progress to a high level study than in a subject than those who focus on revision of topics they know are going to be in the exam. Now, a lot of you watching this, some of you will have been at school quite a lot. Some of you will have had really good online stuff. Some of you will have been using my material, which I think is pretty good and that might help you. But some of you will have, to have had to self-isolate, your school will have been shut, there's been no work set when you're at home. Some of you will have had a really raw deal. And I think the dis and obviously it's going to be unfair to some extent because it's such a horrible year and the way everything's completely disrupted. But I guess what they're trying to do is make sure that um, students who have been in school don't have a, such a massive, massive advantage over those of you who've unfortunately had to miss a lot of it. So, um, but what I do read into this though is that the more physics you understand, and I'm talking about any subject really, but in terms of physics, the more physics you understand, the more topics you've seen, the more practical work you've been exposed to, that's just gonna build a good, solid understanding of the course. And that means even though you might be told which things come up in the exam, you can use your general knowledge about the science to actually just do better overall. So, um, that's me rabbiting on. There's a link um, in the description and also in the comments below if you want to put your feedback in. Again, you've got until the 20th of December to do that. Um, and I'm gonna be doing lots of stuff, not only live streams from the start of January, but as soon as the exam boards publish what's coming up in the exams, I can make sure that I focus the video content I do and the live streams to help you prepare for that. So when it comes to the exams, you have the best chance possible. Thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget you can subscribe to me on YouTube and you can find hundreds more videos over on my website. So just go to physicsonline.com and you can find everything that you might need to help prepare for your exams. Thank you very much.